you a very brief overview of the business, uh, the trial data collection itself, uh, the equipment we use, and any other potential uses for the mass data collection. Brief history, established in 1972, head office in Milton Keynes, just a couple of, um, couple of miles down the road. Um, got a few smaller satellite offices now dotted around the country. Uh, we employ just over 80 staff now. Um, staff can work in um, a variety of locations. We just need certification these days to work pretty much anywhere, whether it's civils, highways, railways, utilities, confined space. And we're members of our trade association, the, the, the TSA. As a business, we are um, uh, speaking to various divisions, managed separately. They, uh, there are some fair overlaps between them. The mobile mapping uh, division is probably the more of interest today. It does move into the GIS and asset management as well. So, um, the mobile mapping, uh, the title we, we had for this was the creation of 3D LiDAR uh, environments. So, initially, uh, autonomous vehicles are going to need good, accurate mapping data to operate properly. Uh, the mobile mapping trial we carried out uh, with Ryan, we, we've uh, mapped from the railway station up to the shopping centre along Midsummer Boulevard, which is that road that you see out the front of the building. Take in a few side roads and the back of the railway station as well. Um, also believe sensor aerial surveys are due to carry out um, some imagery, imagery based uh, UAV uh, surveys which hopefully uh, we can combine together with our data to get one really big good data set. Uh, these large areas can be mapped very quickly and very accurately. So it's a shame um, Showed a couple of images of the Leica Pegasus 2 mobile mapper. That's actually um, outside the building here from last week. And thanks to Matt for taking those photos. They're very good. Um, so, so uh, in our case, it's uh, roof mounted on the back of a van. Um, as Shane, Shane said, it can be mounted on pretty much any vehicle. So, Midsummer Boulevard, it was about 1,200 metres long of dual carriageway, um, plus the side roads, the back of the railway station, so a couple of miles of highway. We've driven it three times, I think it is, a um, couple of hours to do that. It is really good, accurate data, and at the moment we haven't um, linked this into any survey control of any sort, um, with the different um, tracks, as it's called, from each circuit around around the boulevard the worst areas we've got at the moment are uh, 35 mil so that millimeters so that's um, pretty good we could tighten that up with a bit more a bit more work in the office and maybe even uh, linking it to some survey control at the moment we spent about a day cleaning the data downloading registering together and just coming up with a few snapshots of the data for today We'll have a few video fly-throughs as well that if anyone wants to have a look later on. Go and see Lewis, he'll have it all on the laptop. Uh, the data going forward can be provided in, a, in a, a wide variety of formats from the point cloud to the imagery as well. So once we've finished uh, driving the roads, uh, then we trialled the backpack solution as well. Um, we spent about an hour and a quarter just walking the footpaths, um, also the, the public circulation areas outside the shopping centre and uh, outside the railway station as well. There's quite a large area there. Um, taking in the underpasses, um, we've got some really good results. The data is downloaded pretty much straight into the into the, the mobile mapping software uh, data as well. So that was really quick matched in perfectly. Uh, there's a couple of areas where there wasn't really any satellite um, visibility at all, but we need to spend um, a few hours just uh, tightening up the registration there. And it's very easy to operate. It's a very expensive rock section. <laughs> just a few snapshots of the data. Now, uh, that's the front of the railway station. 
uh, the, the main circulation area out the front. So that is both sets of data all in, in the one piece of software. And that is just millions of points colorized from the cameras on the, on the equipment. And um, both sets of data from the backpack and the, the vehicle data. That there is just a snapshot through one of the underpasses. Um, again, that is just point cloud data. You can just about see the uh, railway station in the background. Anyone familiar with the back of the railway station, the car parking? You do pick up a lot of extra data. It's not overly clear on this image, but if you see the data on the laptop, you some very good detail of the, even the platforms on the railway, the overhead electric cables to make the trains run. A lot of data there. And the final uh, slide for, for the trial, really that's just looking through the point cloud data up from the train station all the way up to the shopping centre entrance. And a few extras, one on a roundabout, and at the actual entrance itself. Just to point out again, um, these mass data collection techniques, they all of the data, whether a vehicle or person mounted or aerial mounted, they can all be combined uh, pretty quickly into one big data set. Just a couple of other projects we've been working on. That's, that again is just point cloud. Up from the sky that was photoshopped in, that's um, between uh, the main highway between Junction 10 on the M1 up to Luton Airport um, <coughs> to provide a topographic survey of that highway plus the surrounding areas. Um, it would have been very difficult due to the, the highway, the highway being very busy. Um, so we mobile mapped that saved us weeks of site work and that data is really good accurate data all to within probably 20 million. Uh, final output for that was a 3D topographic survey and there was some vast costs as I say in the reduction of health and safety um, issues for, for traffic management. Silks and Circuit we've been working there for probably 25 years keeping their plans up to date. Um, we did our initial trials actually with the Pegasus before we bought it um, at Silverstone Circuit. It's an ideal location, perfect um, GPS satellite visibility. Um, but since then we've been back and mapped all of the circuits there. Um, it takes about nine minutes to drive around the Grand Prix circuit, not quite Formula One standards, but uh, three laps of, of the circuit. Oh, all put together because the satellite coverage was so good. I think the biggest errors we were finding was about 11 millimeters between each lap. So that's without us uh, tinkering with the data to, to drop it in even closer. Um, the output for this is colorized point clouds at the moment. Um, between us and Silverstone Circuit, it's being sold to a race team basically that wants to get their hands on it. And, uh, Divvy up the money as and when someone buys it. Um, but we're also hoping to maybe gain some interest from some gaming companies who might find that data useful. It is very accurate. Uh, one more project. Uh, just finished this one, I think, last week. Um, some routes for Crossrail 2, which uh, may happen when they finish Crossrail 1. Uh, so all those yellow lines on that Google Earth image is about 110 miles worth of highway. Um, so we've driven all of that highway with the Pegasus 2 and over 110 miles worth within 18 days. Um, the output is colorized point clouds and the spherical imagery. We, at the moment, um, there's no need for a detailed uh, drawing work, if you like, modeling work to be used on the data. Uh, but maybe at some point if they want to start using it for that sort of thing we would probably need to revisit part of the site to uh, put in some survey control to tighten up the registrations but even so um, it is very accurate data. That's just a snapshot uh, over one of the bridges on the Thames 
think it's Albert Bridge. Right here. And that's just of some principally ornate buildings. Um, just to show the quality of the data really, that's probably one pass with the, with the vehicle. We could quite happily draw elevations from that if we needed to, whether that's 2D, 3D. Data processing, um, we've got a fair variety of uh, software and we need fairly hefty PCs to run this data on. The point clouds are very large and um, we've got a host of Leica products there. We use ArcGIS quite a lot for the uh, data processing, uh, which is a plug-in to the Leica software and a host of Autodesk products. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, just for that. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so maybe additional uses for the mobile mapper, um, mass data collection for smart cities, and very similar for GIS asset data collection. It could be simple, lamp post pipe team, but the imagery and the data is there. Topographical surveys we're already working on. A brief summary, very valuable data that we, we can collect. It's not just the point cloud, there's the imagery as well, which is uh, full 360 degree imagery, maybe every five meters. And the data from the trial is going to be used uh, by various consultants that Ryan's going to send it to, hopefully, um, to produce a more accurate 3D visualization and uh, virtual reality model for the autonomous vehicle program. And that's it.